Welcome to this week's snippet. This is where we get down and dirty on a specific topic. And today's topic, what is a dirty gene? I'm Dr. Ben Lynch, and this is the Dirty Genes Podcast. So a dirty gene is a gene that is not performing at its best. It's not optimal. It's, it's struggling. So because the original book title for dirty genes was supposed to be called the seven deadly genes. And that did not resonate well with me at all, frankly, because they're not deadly genes. There are genes, genetic variations, which absolutely do cause some serious harm and they can uh, kill you. Uh, even in utero, um, if a developing baby has certain genetic variations, they can't even survive. So by me writing a book called The Seven Deadly Genes and you can change them through diet and lifestyle, that would not be good. What I'm trying to convey is people's choices are going to either clean a gene or dirty it. So the concept of a dirty gene is simply a gene that is not performing at its best because of a variety of reasons. One, you can be born with a dirty gene, meaning that you are born with a gene that has a specific genetic variant, which either slows it down considerably, uh, like the MTHFR gene, for example. If you are born with a dirty MTHFR gene, and this gene makes your body's number one form of folate called methylfolate, if this one is your inherited a genetic variant, it might be reduced in function by upwards of 70%. So if you have a gene that is 70% less responsive than a gene without that variant, that's pretty significant. So if you know that you've inherited a born dirty gene, like the MTHFR genetic variant, like I do personally, and I went through a lifetime of issues until I realized that I needed to put more love and support in my dirty MTHFR gene. And if I was consuming things that made my gene uh, MTHFR even dirtier, like consuming folic acid or using nitrous oxide at the dentist, both of which I did growing up, then I would be really struggling. And I did growing up. So by you knowing that if you've inherited a dirty gene from your parents or the lifestyle things that you are doing, thinking that they're good and they're not good for you as an individual, but they could be fine for others, these also can dirty your genes. I remember when I was given nitrous oxide at the dentist, I still remember today what it was like. I mean, I was laying back in that chair as we all did. And I just remember feeling extremely weird and not good because that nitrous oxide was dirtying my MTHFR gene. So let's talk about the things which can dirty your genes. So drugs, medications uh, like nitrous oxide can dirty your genes, meaning it reduces its ability to function because it's, you know, for various reasons for nitrous oxide, the specific reason is it damages vitamin B12. It just literally destroys it. So if nitrous oxide, i.e. laughing gas, that you get at the dentist or in labor wards, you know, for pregnancy now that they're using it, which is crazy. Um, so it's, it's damaging the vitamin B12. And then if it's damaging vitamin B12 and you have a genetic variance or your MTHFR gene is dirty, then your homocysteine levels go up and that causes all sorts of problems, all sorts of problems, cardiovascular problems, mental problems, neurological problems, detoxification problems, and you name it, it's a problem. And so medications are an issue. Uh, foods can be an issue. So even healthy foods can dirty your genes because they demand your genes to function. So for example, if you're drinking green tea, it can slow down uh, certain genes. Um, and is that bad? Well, it's not bad, but it's important to know. So if you're drinking green tea, it can slow down a gene called COMT. Is that dirtying your COMT? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's dirtying your COMT gene, but it's slowing it down, which is maybe predisposing you to irritability, anxiety, insomnia, um, and PMS or higher estrogen levels or so on. So if you're sucking down a whole bunch of green tea or you're taking supplements of green tea extract, 
and maybe you were fine at the beginning and you actually noticed it picked up your mood and you did well, but you continued taking it because you heard in the news or you heard from someone how awesome it is, but now you're starting to notice that you're more anxious lately or you're more irritable or your sleep is becoming a problem. Well, you've dirtied your CMT gene, meaning you put so much work onto it because a CMT gene has to break down those catechols in green tea. It's a compound that tea has, so it has to break those down. And if your genes are busy doing one thing, like helping reduce or balance your dopamine levels, your estrogen levels, but you're bombarding it with another, i.e. tea, then it can only do one of two things. So if you're sucking down a bunch of green tea or taking green tea supplements or ECGC supplements, then your dopamine and your estrogen levels are not going to be tended to. And so they're going to potentially be increased. So a dirty gene basically has too much work to do. Um, sometimes it doesn't have enough work if you don't give it anything to do. So for example, um, let's say that you have a genetic variation that is supposed to carry your dopamine and your ability to transport dopamine is already reduced, but you also have a reduced ability to make dopamine. So you can't make dopamine very well. You can't even carry it very well. And these genes are just kind of sitting there waiting, but you're not eating protein. You have to make dopamine and there are genes which help you make dopamine. But in order to do that, you have to need enough protein. If you're not eating enough protein, maybe you're doing intermittent fasting, maybe you're doing ketogenic diet, you know, maybe you're just fasting in general and you notice your moods and your focus and your concentration has gone down the toilet. Well, you've made yourself dirty gene. Why? Because you haven't given that gene enough tools in order for it to do its job. If you hire someone to come and mow your lawn for you and they don't have a lawnmower and they were, you were supposed to provide it for them because they don't have a truck, but they're willing to come over. It's a 10-year-old kid, right? And they want to mow it for 20 bucks. So it was like, cool, all right, come and mow my lawn. But the 10-year-old kid's standing there. The grass is growing. You come home from work. You get mad. My grass is long. And the kid is like, you're supposed to give me the mower. He didn't give me the mower. And you're like, oh, sorry. I'll have it out for you next time. It's the same thing. Your genes need the tools in order to provide service for you. But you're in control of that with your mouth, your eyes, your nose, your ears, and your sense of touch. Everything is waiting for you in your body, typically for an impulse, because otherwise it's just going to rest and repair. And you know what? We all have dirty genes. I have dirty genes. You have dirty genes. Everyone. Yes, you inherit them, but you also create them. If you make a choice to stay up late and have a party, go for it. Just know that you've overwhelmed some certain genes and it's good to know which genes you've dirtied. And if you have the tools to understand which genes you dirtied and what you need to do in order to clean them up, then you can party and have fun and then focus the next day on supporting those specific genes. So to give you an example, I went to a amazing restaurant in Texas when I was there at a conference. And it was a Brazilian steakhouse. And at this Brazilian steakhouse, they have basically an all-you-can-eat smorgasbord of amazing meats. I was like, yeah, I was there for four hours. <laughs> four hours. And as mentioned earlier, I was born with a dirty MTHFR gene. And this particular gene is really, really important in producing the body's primary form of folate. I was not eating salad. I was not eating liver. I was eating masses of amounts of protein, meat. And when you are doing that and you are not consuming enough folate, then what happens is that protein, it breaks down into the components of, of called amino acids. And one of these amino acids that's high in protein is called methionine. And methionine turns into a compound called homocysteine. And if you aren't measuring your homocysteine levels at your doctor, you should be. And I can tell you right now, after sitting there for four hours eating meat, 
My homocysteine levels were through the roof, sky high. I had the meat sweats, cognitive dysfunction. I felt terrible. And I had to take literally seven to 10 milligrams of methylfolate in order to clean up my dirty MTHFR gene because I didn't get enough folate. I pounded it with a bunch of protein. And so if you're on a high GAPS diet, high paleo diet, or you just go to an all you can eat sometimes and you splurge. So I struggled the next day, but I knew how to clean it up. And that's exactly what I teach you at the Dirty Genes podcast. So take care and I'll see you at next week's snippet. Bye-bye. 